Hello, hello everyone, AJ here and welcome on to another episode from our survival let's play. So as you guys can see, we have been slowly but surely doing the interior of our house. As I said in the last episode, I'm not the best at interior decorations at all. So I'm really trying my best. You know, we got a little bedroom area over here and then a little storage unit that is kind of not complete as yet. I wanted to come back on camera real quick while we're doing stuff. And then we also have a downstairs. So I am still not really 100% sure about this staircase. It does get the job done. <laughs> um, is it efficient? Yes, because it actually saves space. But is it pretty? I Pending. That status is pending. And I still don't really have any ideas or plans for in this room as yet. And the downstairs is genuinely just not decorated. So I think we're going to do a recap of the last episode because the last episode was a bit crazy and we just need to do a small little recap. What do you think? So recap time. So in the last episode, we did ourselves a nice little farming area and we got ourselves situated with a little bit more food and just a lot of farming experiences just for fun. You get what I'm saying? Also, we did a storage area. So our storage area is literally right down here and it's it's not the best. It's kind of crammed in here. There's really nothing inside of it either. So is it really a storage area? Yes, it serves the purpose of storage. And then it also doubles down as our mining area, which is also, this is our mining entrance. Uh, it's still not dug down yet and we're not really going to rush it. And the outside is a bit undecorated at the moment i don't know what to put up here i'm think i don't know honestly i might just put like some piles of stone maybe some mine cars and some mine cart rails eventually and turn it into like um actual mining like an industrial mining area like like a mining cave an excavators cave i don't know i don't know <laughs> there's also our enchanting table which we struggled so much in the last episode to get enchanting. We were working so hard for fortune, but we only got stuck with unbreaking three and efficiency four, which is not too bad, but I really wanted fortune and I still have some diamonds done in the mines that I haven't mined yet, but I am gonna actually just close my eyes and mine them. It might be a little bit painful, but we're gonna have to work with it. And there's also our chicken cooker. So this was actually from the first episode, but just thought we should know our chicken cooker has been chicken cooking and <laughs> providing us a, with a lot of food. And then we also got mini blocks. So that's it for the review of last episode. But for this episode, it's going to be a little bit more chilled, a little bit more tying everything together, a little bit more getting ourselves more organized. So we're trying to upgrade our tree area. So we want to get a specific or designated area for trees, make it look pretty and spaced out so it is a bit more efficient than what we have going on here with our trees and leaves overlapping i also want to get all this together then there's also the sugarcane so there's the story of sugarcane down here so while this is a bit tucked away on the river bed or the river bank i keep saying bed it is not really the most efficient you know nothing manual is efficient we can automate this pretty easily and make it where we just gather sugarcane passively not that we're gonna need a whole bunch of sugarcane but you know paper for tnt eventually when we're gonna go mining for ancient debris we're trying to plan for the future here so we're gonna upgrade our sugarcane farm and all of the good stuff then we are also gonna try our best as possible to put these guys to use so these guys they are very useful yes they provide us with amazing trades and amazing resources that we might have not been able to get or that could have been a challenge to get but they also spawn these these beautiful mobs up here iron golems and these are like a good source of iron passively you know we don't really have to do anything manually for them the setting up of an iron farm in java edition is a bit different oh look at our little area it's a bit different from what i'm used to because i am a bedrock player so java in general is just a bit different so we're getting used to it but it's nothing that a short tutorial can't fix and then we're gonna also work on tying our village area together but that is like literally for later down we're gonna turn this into something very amazing so stay tuned for that Oh, there are certain things in Minecraft that I just don't think should be automated. For example, trees. They are 
multiple different tree farms that I could do that are automated. I just don't think that it should be because it just takes away from the actual grind. Yes, there are million and one other things you can do in Minecraft, like building a mega base or building a mega castle or something crazy. Yes, there is. And I do agree that it takes a while to actually gather the resources for things like that. But I just don't think that tree farms and like cobblestone and stuff like that should be automated. Well, cobblestone maybe because while stone is like easy to get, it can run out like from abundance in your area. But at the end of the day, it's nothing really short of just going to a new area and mining some cobblestone especially if you got a beacon like why would you want to automate cobblestone if you get what i'm saying and there are ways that you can like make it be a bit easier and be accessible as well without automating it so we're going to also explore some ways like that so we don't really have to go down into caves and mine stuff right. so i went ahead and cleared this area and i decided that it doesn't look too bad for a tree farm and I could like flatten the place out a little bit and do some extra like some extra terrain in the air so that it looks good in a second after we're done upgrading our tree farm but what I think I want to do I just want to like go in fours so I want to do all big trees here then the smaller trees can just be basically anywhere um so like how many space do you think we should do one two three four maybe four spaces should be fine between all of them and maybe this way we go five one two three four five and then we just do that and then what we're gonna do with the sides we're gonna go ahead and put stairs here so that it looks like just so it doesn't look bland and then maybe in the corners we can add a wall a wall here a wall here and also a wall there and that's what i'm thinking and then we just plant our beautiful four four um well, two by two trees on these platforms going all the way up maybe like maybe a couple more so maybe like three more could go and then all the way down this way again and then we can go ahead and find somewhere that we can put our one by one trees i think that could work all right, so we have done the farming area, well, the tree area, actually, and this is what I was thinking. It actually looks pretty good. I mean, it's kind of, how do I say it? it? It's not the biggest, you know, we got to struggle. We got to squeeze through there a little bit, but it's fine. It'll work. It worked. And then we have enough space to plant enough trees, and they go look nice over here. Can I? Okay, there we go. And when it's all grown, it should, like, look beautiful. I think it will. And I might decorate the area too. I might have like a waterway running through it for a while. I don't know. And then we could have some bushes and maybe we could do something on the outside. Ooh, I know what I can do on the outside. I'm not going to tell y'all. Y'all are going to just have to wait around and see. <laughs> but it's going to be pretty. See, this is what I'm talking about. When it's all grown over here, it's going to look so pretty. Feels so nice to walk through. Look at all my trees all grown. I mean, these are taking a minute. They coming up, they coming up, they coming up pretty soon. And I am still very, very paranoid to mine this tree. I'm not, it's just gonna stay there. I'm not gonna trouble it. Um, but we're gonna move on and we're gonna go ahead and make the sugarcane farm. So I was thinking that this area over here, so where the chicken cooker starts, straight down to probably this hole maybe could be like the mechanical district of some sorts so we're gonna put like the sugarcane farm in here we can probably make an automatic cacti farm eventually and put somewhere around this area and just make it look nice it can also be fenced in or maybe walled in too and just have everything look so pretty and these chickens are just very very chickening at this point um where can we put it i think that we're gonna go ahead and put the sugarcane farm maybe down here actually and we're thinking we can dig it down so we're gonna put it like this way instead of this way so i think we're also gonna do a little tutorial about how to do sugarcane farms it's not really hard but just in case you want a tutorial i'm gonna go ahead and do that for us okay so what you're going to go ahead and do is dig a eight block trench because water only runs a block. So it's going to go straight down here. And if you remove this, it shouldn't go any further. And then we're going to have a 
what's that thing called <laughs> we're gonna have a hopper right here that collects all the drops and then we're gonna have sugar cane going straight alongside this right here we will actually be making a double sugar cane farm today so the method that i'm using is that is not the most efficient but it gets the job done especially if you do a whole bunch of afk in here you will really not notice the losses in this farm so it shouldn't really be a bad idea to do a double one and then what we're gonna do after this so we're gonna go ahead and fill sugarcane on each side then we're gonna grab a solid block so let's grab the cobblestone that i have here and then we're gonna just put it right behind this so we gotta elevate it one up so we're gonna put the pistons above the solid blocks the reason why is because if we put it on the first it's gonna destroy the parent block basically and then it won't grow back so it won't really be automatic you'll have to be coming back over and doing it over and over again which is kind of annoying like why go through all the hassle to make a automatic sugarcane farm that you have to keep on or continuously replanting the blocks for so that's why we do it like that then we're gonna go ahead and grab our pistons so as i said it's gonna be double so eight and we're doing 16 so it should be eight on this side there we go and then eight on this side all right there we go so as i said once this piston is activated it's gonna shoot and then it's gonna send the sugar cane flying and i'm wondering do you think it might fly all the way over here probably not even if it does as i said it's such an it's such a easy farm to make the losses are really gonna be minimal then we're gonna take some solid blocks and put behind the pistons so one behind each piston on this side and then on the next side then we're gonna hop on top and then we're gonna go ahead and place our observers the observers are really weird to place you might gotta stoop down a little bit try to hold your cursor at the tip or the edge of the piston so that ensures that the observer faces out so it's looking onto the sugar cane when it grows three blocks high Then we're gonna go ahead and grab our redstone and then we're gonna place redstone behind all of our observers. And then what this does is connect the observers to the pistons. So as soon as a sugar cane grows up, for example, like this, the, we didn't see that right, didn't we? <laughs> Hold on, let's hop up top. As soon as a sugar cane grows onto the piston, it gets shot out. I mean, as I said, some are going to go ahead and be lost over there, but it's fine. So it goes and then I want to, can we make an angle so we can see this, the observer work? There we go. So it powers everything and then it gets shot over into the water and all the way down here and then we can just pick it back up. So that's how we're going to do our sugar cane. So our sugar cane farm is actually basically complete. All we got to do is work on the collection system, which right after this clip, we are going to start working on. So I am going to need a hopper or a couple hoppers, actually, so that we can make a collection system. So the sugar cane comes running down from the water source into the hopper and then get collected by the chest. Similar to what we're doing over here with the chicken cooker. Our next rule of thumb would be making a iron golem farm and I was surveying the area and trying to figure out the best place to build it and I was thinking that over here would be actually perfect. It is flat enough for the design that I'm going to make. It is far enough away from the village, I am assuming, and it is close enough to me where I'll be working so it will be loaded in the background. The most ideal place actually would be to build it over at, where is it? World Spawn where that village is. But I'm not gonna be walking 2,300, 2,800 basically blocks over there to the iron farm every episode. So we're gonna build it here and hope that it does what it's supposed to do. And the design that I'm going to be making is actually by Pixel Rifts. And I'll be linking that video down in the description of this um, so that if you want to follow along, you can do it because I don't think I will be doing like a full tutorial because one, it is not mine and two, 
I am not really the best at doing these mechanical things. So um, I'm going to go grab some resources. And then as soon as I start building the iron farm, I will be back. In this chest here should be everything we need to make our iron farm. Give or take a couple extra blocks because why not? So I already started setting it up. All we're doing now is waiting for nighttime so we can get a zombie. But this is going to be the tricky part because I do not have a name tag. So we're going to have to try to find a zombie that has a small chance of picking up an item that I throw at it. That is to prevent it from respawn. And hopefully we find a good candidate for that job but in the meantime this is this is the setup basically as i said i'm gonna link the tutorial to pixel video don't want to sit here and act like this is my iron farm or anything because it's not i'm not this smart um so basically you had two trap doors well three trap doors two over the cauldron that it's gonna host our zombie and then one to the back that you can stand on just to hold um, just just like a placeholder until you get the zombie in there You're gonna hop up onto this block and then stand here open this one when the zombie comes down Then we close this trap door and that should basically hold the zombie in there And you're gonna put something over the zombie's head so that it don't burn in the sun So at this point, we're just waiting at nighttime and I am very 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 paranoid when it comes on to nighttime because there's a lot of bad guys And I don't want to die as the sun sets, we are going to make a few little preparations in this area because I do not want any zombies or any mobs in general spawning in this general area while we're doing it. So we're going to just spam some torches all over the place so nothing spawns here. And then we're going to head out a little bit further to hopefully find a zombie that is willing <laughs> to pick something up from me. And I also need to eat. So we're gonna head over to our house actually we're gonna stand upstairs and as we see a zombie we just run to grab it where is my chicken okay so let's get to business and then we're gonna just try to filter it out and then eventually bring it over here and then it should be clear of mobs if we do have any little mobs we can take care of them with our trusty bow that i am definitely learning how to use <laughs> and then we should be smooth sailing after that hopefully it doesn't take all night well, we have our first few candidates here. Let's see how how well they track to us. And I also need to get rid of that creeper. Because of uh, trauma. Okay, so there's a few of them coming towards me. Let them go, let them go. I want to also check my back because I don't want to be explodified by any creepers. I still can get this creeper, can I? Ugh. There we go. Okay. I don't want to be explodificated by any creepers. Does either one of you want to take up an iron nugget? Oh, that was that was easy. Wow. Okay. So we're gonna just slowly um move. 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 Okay. We're panicking. We're panicking. Don't panic. <laughs> we're panicking. We're panicking. Oh my god, we're panicking! <laughs> no okay 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 that's a lot of mobs behind me oh my god okay no oh you have a thing but that wasn't by me wasn't it move ah no Okay, ah! <laughs> I'm so bad at PvP. Java PvP is just different. No, okay, I'm gonna die. Hold on. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Where's my... Where's my guy? Oh, there he is. Okay. Come with me, come with me, come with me. Be a good sport. <laughs> okay, I got this. Okay, okay, I got this, I got this, I got this. Oh! No! How did I fall off? What is happening here? <laughs> okay. 
Okay, that's a lot of you guys. Hold on. Give me... Is that a spider jockey? I thought I just saw a spider jockey. Uh-uh. That could have been death. Actually, I've had a sword with sweep and edge. Should we try this again in the next night? I didn't make a sword. I should have had a sword that I could have used the sweep and edge effect. Okay, we're going to try this again. Let's, let's clear the mobs and let's sleep and then let's try this again the next night. Hey, this might work. This might work. Hold on. This might work. This might work. This might work. It might work. Please let there not be like a creeper or anything just waiting for me. Let me get rid of this creeper. I didn't pick my arrows up. <laughs> come around here. Come around here. Come on. Don't be shy. Don't be shy. There we go. And he's safe. And he's safe. Did I do it? I think I did it. Hold on. Hold on, let me go get my arrows, because these these creepers are coming too close to me. Too close for comfort. Where are my arrows at? There they are. There they are. I guess I'm at my worst nightmare. Creepers. Come on. Boom. <laughs> you didn't kill him. How? Why are you still jumping? You shouldn't be jumping still. Come on, don't be shy. Stop jumping. Hello. Oh, I'm trying to... Okay. Cool. Fine. Let me just step away from you real quick. How? How? Oh my god. I'm. Oh my god. Okay. Let's try this again. We're gonna try this again. I didn't think about that. I thought because he was in a helmet. Oh. Okay. We're gonna try this again tomorrow. Well, tonight. And we'll see how this works. And. Look at that. Take two was a success. So we have our zombie in, and this zombie is literally not going to pay us any attention. We could even remove this right here. So um, Pixel Riffs explained this perfectly in his video, but basically his eyesight, so his peripheral vision or whatever it's called, is blocked by the trap door. So he's just not going to be interested in us. We can go as close to him as possible. He's just not going to hit us. Um, look at that, it's 81 days already. It took me how many days? <laughs> but that's fine. So we basically have everything set up. We're just gonna go ahead and clear this area, clear around this area, then we're gonna go ahead and make around the area non-spawnable. So we're gonna use path blocks because they are not quite a full block. So we're gonna make it unspawnable by doing that. So let me get this done and then we'll come back when it's time to build the spawning platform for the iron golems. And when it's also time to build the killing chambers. So I'll be right back. The main goal with this farm is to ensure that none of the surrounded blocks are spawnable. And we make dub for that wood, the fact that this is a bottom half slab that is up here. Because anything that is spawnable, the iron golem will spawn on. And uh, they will definitely kill our zombie. Because I thought Pixel Rift made a, well, not that mistake. But it was a very similar mistake. So I did um, modify his build a little bit. Instead of doing what he did with the fence gates on the side, I put actual leaves or so solid blocks basically but non-spawnable solid blocks and i also followed behind his footsteps and did the poles at this side here and then i added some slabs at the top so that they don't spawn and then in this area we are going to have some open fence gates so that the golems can get washed all the way down here but they the water won't be able to run over does that make sense i think it does make sense so let's get that done we may or may not have a problem 
there are four villagers in here and i don't think it should be any big deal because each one of them should get a chance to sleep while they're hiding behind the this thing here what it's called again the pot so everything should be fine so we're gonna go ahead and figure that out we're gonna do this carefully we're gonna turn all the blocks back into path blocks while we are doing this just so we don't spawn any golems where there shouldn't be any golems spawning okay oh hello i'm trying there we go then there should be golems there we go oh he's getting stuck what is he getting stuck on hello what are you getting stuck on i think it just spawned in the leaf actually and just got stuck in there huh interesting and then it should like spawn a golem every 30 to 35 seconds i believe so let's see after this one um gets murdered let's see um give it a couple seconds and then there should be another spawn And there we go. And then if we did everything right down here too, it should be collecting all of our drops. We should be hearing golems burning. There we go, burning golems. Love it, love to hear it. And there we go. Okay, this is not supposed to be in there. There's actually, I can leave this open so I can see the golems being murdered. <laughs> um, but yeah, so this works well. I have iron for days. I am so happy that I built this. And then we can do some AFK sessions. If I stay down here, the, th the question is, do more golems spawn up top? Let's stay here for a second. Oh, there we go, they do! So I can definitely AFK down here. Oh my goodness, I am so smart. So this is where we're gonna call it the episode and actually it has been a very productive episode i am so proud of me we upgraded our sugar cane we upgraded our tree farm and we built a iron farm and i am just in love with how it looks and while the golems do spawn in the leaves periodically once they do decide to path find somewhere they do get washed by the current straight into our killing chamber which is beautiful it wonderful it works i was so nervous to turn this on i spend a few in-game days just looking and counting and redoing the math because i was so paranoid but i'm so happy to see everything works see for example there's this golem in there right now that spawned in the leaves and he's just deciding to chill there but that's fine that is completely okay so in the next episode we're gonna have a lot of adventurous moves so stay tuned for that and i will see you guys in the next episode <laughs> good bye